Okay. The Master Jedi himself, Luke Skywalker. Let's talk about it. So Luke was in this episode again. It was kind of expected. If we were going to see Grogu, we were going to see Luke. Duh. Well, some of the stuff that happened was great, but let's start off by talking about that deep fake technology. At the end of Mandalorian Season 2, we saw Luke for the first time since Return of the Jedi, and it was it was a great, great episode. It was a great feeling. Some of the best Star Wars I've seen, but let's face it, the digital technology was brand new. They were using new face ID technology to try and build old Luke Skywalker's face. And while it was very impactful and still pretty good, it was still a little wonky and one of the biggest criticisms of that episode. Well, oh my God, they improved it like crazy. He looked so good in this episode. The advancements they've made to the deepfake technology from two years ago is outstanding. And it's something that we shouldn't expect anything less from Lucasfilm, the company that pretty much founded modern day visual effect making. And of course, this has a direct tie in with the thing we talked about last year, which was Lucasfilm hiring Shamook, the YouTuber who does deepfakes on a bunch of different projects. And it's obvious he was brought in to work on this specific framing because he pretty much got the job when he redid the Luke Skywalker deep break at the end of season two of The Mandalorian. So it was really cool to see his work here. Now, obviously it could be somebody else, but let's be honest, I'm pretty sure it's this guy. <laughs> I'm so glad they brought him in because they're get, they're, hi they're doing what they always do. They hire the best of the best to work at Lucasfilm and it shows and it has improved so much. Now you can tell some of it is still a work in progress because a lot of the shots that did use the deep fake aspect were done with static shots which pretty much means the camera is very still the actor is very still and it is also very far away and if you also noticed a lot of the lines of dialogue spoken by luke skywalker were him being off screen saying those lines because the lips are still not right and that was a big criticism for mandalorian 2 as well regardless of all the nitpicks it was fantastic it was so good to see it again luke skywalker is star wars he is. I mean, it makes everyone feel so good. And his lucky companion, R2-D2, seeing him again too. R2 seems so at peace on this planet, wherever they're at. He seems so happy. And one of the best parts of this, which was totally an R2 move, was bringing Mandalorian up to that area where the, the temple was being built and the bench was being made from him. And then once the bench was being made, he would... Mando looked at it, he was like, how long am I going to be here? He's like, take a seat, buddy. And then he shuts down because he himself knows it's going to be a long time until someone comes to talk to him, which was Ahsoka. So getting back to Luke, the training sequences. There was something really poetic about Luke Skywalker being the one to teach the lessons Yoda taught him to another one of Yoda's species who is younger and in need of that type of training. I loved it. Whether it was fan service or nostalgic or member berries, who gives a crap? It was beautiful to see, and like I said, poetic. Uh, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Forgive me, that's my best George Lucas impersonation. But it's it, that's what Lucas sets out to do, is have the, the learner become the master, become the apprentice, become the master over and over and over, even tying into The Last Jedi, which I do not like, but... They are what we grow beyond. That is the quote. And that's what happens here. Not only is he training Grogu, but he is suppressing old training and old memories that existed that Baby Yoda himself suppressed because he was traumatized as a child. And that scene too was fantastic when he was collecting those old memories back from his time at the temple, which was a revelation by the way, which I loved. And we got to see old clones. I thought they were going to give us a little bit more by showing him who rescued him from the temple, but I have a theory that it might be tying into Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Obi-Wan saved him. And I don't have anything else to back that up with, so <laughs> make up your own theory. But one reason why I love the flashback was it was exactly like the flashback Anakin has in Revenge of the Sith, stylistically. Oh, and we also got to see what was in the little packaging the little present that mando brought grogu and of, it of course was a chain mail yeah i heard no one guessing that nobody a lot of people said they guessed it i heard no one say that <laughs> i thought it was a little ball it wasn't a little ball they got me though they tricked me i think a lot of people thought it was going to be because of the shape of the of the packaging but it wasn't it was a little chain mail with a little diaper on it so he could like you know wrap it around his body he was cute i can't really see him wearing that but i think that was the idea give him something that doesn't take away from his his overall aesthetic that we're used to so hey it was cool it was cute it was sweet it was very it was very fatherly so 
It wasn't a ball. 